Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here from jefflytics.com and ppccourse.com, and I wanted to share some news with you about Google AdWords and specifically about the Google AdWords customer match feature. Now, this video is both news about the system as well as just a video about how it gets done, but basically I want to show you how you can upload a list of the email addresses of your customers, a list of phone numbers of your customers, or a list of addresses, which would be first and last name, zip code, and country of your customers into Google AdWords and how you can use that as a list that you can target against for your search campaigns. And so I'm going to show you step by step how this is done, I'm going to walk you through the process of the file, how you get the file format right, and just show you this really unique feature that I don't think is used very often within Google AdWords. If you want to go out there and you want to target your existing customers and you want to sell them more, or if you just want to have a better set of targeting options out there, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video about the AdWords customer match feature. So we're going to go in and we're going to show you exactly how the AdWords customer match feature works and how you can use it to your advantage in your next advertising campaign. So let's talk about Google AdWords customer match. And we're talking here about Google AdWords customer match. Did you know that in Google AdWords, you can upload a list of your customers and use that to build audiences within AdWords and make your campaigns much more efficient? Yes, you can. It's really cool. Now, for the last couple of years, you've been able to upload lists of email addresses into AdWords and to understand exactly who your customers are. And you can use that in order to target your customers or exclude them from targeting in your search campaigns on Google AdWords. But now you also have the flexibility to do phone numbers in Google AdWords, as well as customer addresses to match them. How cool is that? It's like one of the coolest things that I've ever seen, and it really makes AdWords even easier to use for people who have big lists of customers, customer lists of over a thousand people. Now this video shows you exactly how it's done, how you can upload your lists, how do you get it into AdWords, and then what it looks like when it's all said and done. The first thing that I want to show you is how to match customers by email address. And the way that you do this in the new Google AdWords is you click on the little gear icon for settings, you go to audience manager, and then within there, you're going to choose to create a new customer list. And once you get into the customer list area, it's going to ask you what you want to do. And you're going to choose the option to upload a list of emails, phones, and mailing addresses. And then you get to choose which type of data you're going to go with. Are you going to choose an email list, a phone list, or what would be the rest of it, which is a customer list based on first name, last name, country, and zip. Now in this case, we are going to choose the email option. So we're going to upload some plain text data based on a customer email list that I have for PPC course. And within this file, and I'll show you what this file looks like in just a second here, you need to make sure that you have a column that's called email. So basically you need a column header called email in your file and then a bunch of email addresses. It's really that easy to get this thing done. Now here's what my email file looks like, at least the first few rows in the email file that I uploaded. And I took this CSV file and I uploaded it to Google. And it turns out that every single one of the email addresses that I uploaded was in the correct format. So Google decided to put the entire list, which was 3,618 people, into their system and to go and process it and to see if they could find these people. And as soon as I did that, I got this thing that said, okay, my list of PPC course customers is populating. At the time that I looked at it right away, it was less than 100 people that were in there. But it says, come back within 24 hours and you're going to see how many we matched. And the cool thing is that within 24 hours, they matched. They matched about half, or actually over half of them were matched for the Google search network, a little bit fewer on YouTube. And then even in Gmail, I had even more people that were in there. I could match them according to Gmail. How cool is that? So I had a list of basically about 2,000 out of the 3,600 people that I submitted that I'm able to target within search, either target proactively or to exclude them from my targeting list. That is awesome. And it really was pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do this. It took me 30 minutes. I just took a list of email addresses that I had already used when I was changing email systems from active campaign to drip. And I just put it in the right format, uploaded it just to see what would happen. So you can do this pretty quickly as long as you have a list of the email addresses of your customers. Now, unfortunately, the demographic data for these people wasn't pulled in. I don't get to see age, gender, parental status, or their location and devices. I'm not sure if this will be populated. It's been about 
18 hours since I uploaded this list. So it could be that it's still waiting to be populated and might be within 24 hours I get this, or I might not get it at all. But some of my other lists that I've generated, my remarketing lists do have demographics. And so I'm not sure why this isn't showing up. It might be because this is not a list that can be done for remarketing. It's because it's a list that only can be used in search, YouTube, and Gmail ads. So if anybody has any thoughts on why this isn't populating, I would love for you to let me know in the comments section. But not bad at all. We had a 50% match rate for our list. Now, if you have a list of over 1,000 people and you can upload it and you can get a 50% match rate, I think you'd be pretty happy. Basically, you can have a pretty solid understanding as to whether or not you are excluding your customers or including them. You have a pretty good, solid rate here. And it gives you a nice chance of getting more successful campaigns because you can use them in your targeting. Now, I also went ahead and decided to match customers by a mailing address as well. Now, how do address uploads work? They're a little bit more complex than our email address uploads. Notice here, it's the same exact area where you're going to upload your data, and you have to have columns that have these titles. In this case, we need first name, last name, country, and zip. I ignored the email and phone. I did not include those in there. I just did last name, first name, country, and zip. And then I put it in my CSV file once again. Now, when they tell you what you need to do, these are the four columns that you need to have in your column headers. So make sure you have only those. I At first, it took me about three or four times to upload this because I had a few superfluous column headers and then some of the data was in the wrong order. For example, my e-commerce system, when I got a report of customers, they gave it zip and then country. In this case, they're looking for country and then zip. The other thing I had to do is I had to manipulate the country down to the two digit country code. So here's what my file ended up looking like. As you can see here, I had the different country codes at the AR stands for Argentina. I actually had it spelled out as Argentina. So it took me a good 30 minutes or so to massage this data and to have it look exactly how it should along the country code. And so that was sort of painful, but this is something where once you do it once you have the format down and then you can just incrementally add every so often to your list. And when it was all said and done, I had 4,199 addresses out of 97 different countries, which is really cool. I had no idea that I had students in 97 different countries, which is really awesome. Holy cow, right? And so I put this together and I uploaded those addresses. And Google said that they found 3,736 in the correct format, meaning that I had all four of the columns, first name, last name, zip code, and country code. And they were able to go and upload it and to try to find these people. Now, I, I didn't really have a lot of hopes for Google being able to match people based on these. I think those four criteria, first name, last name, zip code, and country, it seems like it's too limited. Like that could be a lot of false positives. There's a lot of people who probably live in a zip code who have the same first name and last name in a country. And so they, I wasn't really sure how this would actually work. I was skeptical, but optimistic at the same time. Should I only be doing email addresses? Should I be doing emails and the addresses? Should I add all of them together into one file where there both is email address and the address? And as a result of this one, I went through and of course it took the 24 hours to populate. And in this case, I had 1,000 matches for search and YouTube network, around 1,000. And Gmail, the list was a little bit bigger, people whose Gmail addresses they found, which is really interesting as well. They know these people use Gmail. So that was pretty crazy. A 24% match. Now, the next step I need to do is to upload a list with email addresses, first, last, country, and zip, and see if they have more or less, see if they enhance it or if they have less people in there. Now, because it took me so long to massage the data and I had already deleted the email address from my file, I can't do this easily, so it's going to have to come at a different time when I test this thing out and see how it works. Maybe for the blog post that goes along with this, we'll have done it by then. And so that's how it works. It's pretty straightforward. You can match based on these items and everything seems to be working as planned. Now, phone matching, I don't actually collect phone number on my e-commerce store, so I don't have phone numbers. So I wasn't able to do a phone match and to compare them side by side. But the one thing that I noticed about the phone is that they do have a lot of flexibility when it comes to phone numbers. So they can try a bunch of different things and see if they can load that up there. So if anybody has experience with phone numbers, I would love to have you leave a comment and let us know what your experience was and see how well it matches. Okay, so before we get to the strategies of what you can actually do when you have this implemented on your own site, I just want to show you in the AdWords interface exactly how this works. So if you click on the gear icon, you can go in here and you can find your shared library. Then you're going to want to go to your audience manager. 
And within Audience Manager, you see is my audience list. And then I click on the plus sign here and I see a customer list and I'm gonna upload that. So here's our customer list and we get in here and we can upload our file. And in my case, I'm gonna choose a plain text data. And within that plain text data, I have my customer emails. Got to give it a name up here. The audience name is PPC customers. Just give it that. And then you click on here and you can upload and create your list. It was that easy. This is just happening in real time, happened really fast. You just need to have the file prepared beforehand. And then it says it's gonna take 24 hours. You see my list is here. And since I've already created this list, I'm just gonna remove this list from my database. But that's how it works. And then if we go in here, you can see the one that I did prepared beforehand, almost like a cooking show. We may potentially at some point be able to see demographics, locations, and devices. And finally, we can see whether we include it in audience or we exclude it. Now, I haven't done that yet, but this is where you would actually let the rubber meet the road and you put it in a place where you're excluding or including this audience in your campaigns. Now, once you know about this, it seems to make a lot of sense to add these exclusions to every one of your campaigns when you want to exclude somebody who's a customer and or an inclusion when you want to include your customers in that campaign. So finally, I wanted to leave you with the question of what can you do once you have these lists? Now I showed you in our live demo that you can include or exclude these things from your various search, YouTube and Gmail advertising audiences. And so it's just easy to do. You can do it right in here and actually on the little hamburger menu on the right hand side, you can add to any single campaign if you want to. And I'm going to leave you with strategies that you can use for matched customer lists. The first thing you can do is you can sell only to your customers on AdWords. Now, if you have a product that's renewable and people need to buy it over and over again, and it's really expensive in your niche to sell on AdWords, you could choose to only do AdWords campaigns to existing customers. And that way you're not trying to go after everybody who might buy something. You're going after people who have already bought from you. And that can work really well. So it might be the most efficient AdWords campaign you ever run. And that's because you're only selling to your existing customers. On the flip side, if you have a product that people only buy one time, for example, my PPC course, then you'd want to exclude your existing customers from your ads because you don't want to send them an ad because they're probably not going to buy from you if they've already bought. And so it works on both sides. And basically, you either want to include the people who you think are going to buy from you or exclude them because they're not going to buy. Now, this isn't perfect because we uploaded our list and only about 50% of my customers matched in that list. But that's still better than nothing at all, right? When we do an exclusion, we're still running paid search campaigns just like we normally would. We're doing all the diligence, all the things that we teach in PPC course. We're doing bid management. We're building out our ad groups. We're really doing solid work in AdWords. This is just a cherry on top, right? Because we're saying, okay, let's do all the right things, but let's not try to sell to somebody who's already bought from us. And that's the difference here. And when it comes to advertising and being successful, I think that information is power. The more information you have on the people who are searching, the more powerful your campaigns can be. The more your results can match the results that you want to have. And granular results are better results. So the more granular you are with your targeting, the better the results are from a granular perspective the better your campaigns are going to go, the more successful you're going to be with advertising. So look at this thing as an ace in the hole. Basically, you can say, okay, I want to go after only the people who have a really high likelihood of buying from me, and I'm going to exclude people who aren't going to buy. And you can do that by uploading the email list and matching customers. If you don't have your remarketing pixel in place right now, or if you're not trusting the data that you already have for conversions in Google Analytics, or if those those population sizes aren't big enough that you're not getting results, then AdWords customer match can be the bridge that you need. It can be something where you can take everybody who's ever bought from you and throw them into the system and get some really good demographics, really good audiences based on that. And from there, you'll just be more efficient. You'll just run better campaigns. It might be 1% more efficient. It might be 50% more efficient. It could be 100% more efficient if you're doing it in a way where you're targeting the right people and you're doing an inclusion list of saying, I'm only going to sell to people who've already bought from me. It's going to be so much more high ROI than just going after everybody. But of course, it's limiting at certain points, right? It's limited because you're only going after people who have already bought. And if you're not going after new people, and that list eventually starts to be something where it never really gets bigger and bigger. And so you need to have a mix of different types of advertisements. You really need to have a strategy here in order to get the best results. But generally speaking, the more granular you are with your data, the better the results are going to be. 
And finally, I just want to ask you a question. Did you like this PPC tip? If you did, then make sure that you subscribe to our PPC newsletter at www.ppccourse.com. Every single week we send you a PPC tip. We go in depth with what you can do in AdWords and we teach you from the inside out exactly what you can expect within the Google AdWords ecosystem. So go to ppccourse.com and sign up for our newsletter if you wanna get tips delivered into your inbox every single week about Google AdWords. And thanks for listening, thanks for subscribing, and I look forward to sharing more videos with you on the Jeffalytics YouTube channel. And this has been part of our 90-day challenge where we're making 90 videos about various digital marketing topics in 90 days. Hopefully you're following along and you're enjoying this. And if you did enjoy it, leave a comment for us. Leave a comment on YouTube or leave a comment on our PPC course blog and share with us the breakthroughs you have by watching us do this experiment. Did you think it was cool that 50% of our email addresses matched, yet only 25% of our addresses matched? Have you seen somebody give away that information? Have you seen somebody give you a step-by-step -step guide as to how you can do this within a video? I don't think so. And so if you like this thing and you want more of these things, if you want to see an insider view as to how all this stuff works, leave a comment. Comments are what keep us going. Comments and shares, that's the type of stuff that helps us know that we're hitting the mark with our audience. And so I'd love to hear from you, and I look forward to sharing more tips with you. Make sure you sign up and subscribe to this newsletter because you're going to get hard-hitting tips every single week in your inbox. That's it for this one, and I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.